So in this problem, we're given um, a generic vector space with a basis, looks like a three-dimensional vector space, and we're given a map from R3 to this three-dimensional vector space, uh, linear transformation, and we're told how the transformation works. Now, what the three parts of this problem are asking us to do is just building up to find the standard matrix of the transformation, or sorry, the matrix of the transformation relative to the standard basis for R3 and this basis B for the vector space V. So we start off by computing T of E1, T of E2, and T of E3. So T of E1, uh, this is gonna be T of one, zero, zero. So it's gonna be two X three minus X two. That's gonna be two X three minus X two. So that'll be zero times B one minus 2x2 times b2, so that'll be plus 0b2, and x1 plus 3x3, so that's gonna be one plus three times zero, so plus one b3. Now this 0b1 plus 0b2 plus one b3, or just b3, that's the image of e1 under t. We could simplify that, we should simplify that as just b3. So that's the image of E1 under T. We need to write the coordinates. So this is just what the vector looks, what the image looks like. Part B is different because it's asking for the coordinates of this image relative to the basis B. So the coordinates of T of E1 relative to the basis B, since it's just B3, it's zero B1, plus 0b2 plus 1b3. So there are the coordinates of, e, of the image of E1 under the transformation T relative to the basis B. And we just need to do this for the other vectors. So T of E2 will be the image of T of 0, 1, 0. So now x3 is 0 and x2 is 1, so I'll get negative 1 times b1, that's 2x3 minus x2, minus 2x2, so that'll be minus 2b2, and then x1 plus x3, which are both zero in this case, so we'll have zero b3. So the image of E2 under the transformation is minus b1 minus 2b2. That's the image of E2 under the transformation t. A separate thing would be the coordinates of the image of E2 relative to the basis B. And that would be negative one, negative two, zero. We can do the same thing for T of E3, and then we can get the standard matrix. So we would find out, uh, T, find T of E3 just by computing. And then we would find the coordinates of T of E3 relative to the basis B. And then we can get the standard matrix. Or not the standard matrix, the matrix of T. We only have one standard basis, so I shouldn't call it the standard matrix. The matrix of T relative to the bases E and B. And then the first column will just be 0, 0, 1. That's the coordinates of the image of E1. The second column will be negative 1, negative 2, 0. And then we didn't find the third column, but that's how we would find the matrix of T relative to E and B. Remember, to find the matrix of a transformation, you map the basis vectors. What we did in chapter four was introduce the, we have to write the images using a coordinate map. So this B3 is the image of E1 under T. This vector 0, 0, 1 are the, these are the coordinates of T of E1 relative to B. So B3, this is the image of E3, oops, sorry, E1. 
under T. If V was a polynomial space, this would have to look like a polynomial. The image of E1, if T maps R3 to uh, P2, then this would look like a polynomial. Here, this would, the coordinates should always look like a vector. So this vector are the coordinates of the image of E3, or E1, under T relative to B. The image looks like, the image should look like uh, all the vectors in the codomain. The coordinates should look like they come from Rn, because the coordinates are always the map, or sorry, uh, the coordinate map makes everything look like Rn. Any questions? So that, those are the things that we want to get out of three. It's just breaking down, the find the matrix of the transformation by mapping the basis vectors. Any other questions from 5.4? Since we're in 5.4, talking about problems. Great. If there aren't any more questions from 5.4, I'm going to pause the video and then we'll go on to other questions about other things. Great. Let's pause the video here. Um, this is the, I think 5.4 is like the third iteration of the presentation on linear transformations and everything just kind of builds on each other. We first see linear transformations in I think section 1.7 or 1.8, somewhere way back then. And then we see transformations again in um, chapter two, where we talk about matrix transformations. And then we see transformations again in chapter four and then transformations again in chapter five. It's just one of the things that gets repeated a lot. So let's pause the video and see what other questions you have.